Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh, we're really glad to see you all here. Thank you for making it all the way out to Riverside, California. Long Beach, California. Long Beach, California. Woo. Coming all the way out here to look at us 500 feet in the air. Right. I feel like King Kong up here. Come see the great guy in a suit. There we go. It doesn't fit him. <laughs> suit at the thrift store. I couldn't tell. Oh, really? That's good. That's good. Um, we'd like to first make an announcement. Turn off your cell phones yes. uh, or put them on silent. Um, really helps us out up here. If the president calls you, you can answer the phone, but otherwise, That's fine. keep it in your purse, right. pant pocket. Every comedian tonight has had a traumatic experience linked to the sound of a ringing phone. For so. example, like uh, the sound of a ringing phone reminds some of us of a time when a phone killed our grandma. Arvin. Aww. Sorry, Arvin, I had to mention it. I'm sorry. It's all right. It's okay. She's dead now. <laughs> so, should we begin? We shall begin. Yeah. Okay. Um, we're going to start off the show. That's a great, happy segue to get us into the next part of our act. Trevor and I will be performing some improvisational puppet comedy. Yes. Now, this has never been attempted on stage before. On this stage. Any stage. Any okay. stage. No one's ever done improvisational puppet comedy. This is perfect. <laughs> uh, since there are no microphone stands, we need a volunteer from the crowd to be my microphone stand. Anybody? Uh, Leo? No? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody? Yeah. Go, go. Andrew? Andrew. Andrew, come on up here. Andrew! Uh, yeah. He's tall and thin, like a microphone stand. Uh, come right down the, uh, the gallery section. You can fill in. There's plenty of space in here. Come on in. There's some There's seats up in seats front. There's a couple of seats. Oh. Uh. You unplug the microphone. <laughs> While we're waiting for that, I will introduce you to my new friend. Hey, hey. What are you guys doing over there? Oh, okay. Ciao. Uh, up here, Andrew. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'd like to introduce you to my friend. <laughs> oh, okay. T tonight, tonight. It's gonna be alright. Gonna find out, pretty mama. Oh, thank God. Check. I think we broke it. Let's just let's just do it. Uh, you just yell. Just yell really loud. Okay. We good? All right. Perfect. Okay. Doctor fooling you. This is my good friend, Dr. Fooling Yu. We'd like to perform some improvisation scenes for you. The first scene, we need, um, a, we need a suggestion from the audience of a place where you would go see the doctor. A doctor's office. Thank you very much. We're in a doctor's office. Hello, doctor. Uh, hello. Hello. Come on in. Thank you. To the doctor's office. Thank you. I am a doctor. Thank you. Um, I have a problem. I have a rash behind my ear, ah. and it's itchy. What should I do? Ah, I see. Uh, tell me more about your rash. Well, it's um, red and yes. uh, has pus. Yes. Uh. Okay. More detail, please. Okay. It's behind my, yes. my right ear, and it showed it. Ah. <laughs> what, what are you What are you doing? Why is he Why is he touching himself? He's just doing that. I'm sorry. I, I can't control it. Oh, that's his character. Yeah, that's just what he does. No, you're You're making him do that. No, give me another example. This is what he does. Watch. No, let's Let's do another scene. Okay, where would be somewhere where you would um, see animals in cages? The zoo. That's good. That's a good suggestion. Okay. Um, hi. Hello. Zookeeper. Welcome to my zoo. Uh huh. Uh, I'm here to clean out the baboon cages. Where's the broom? Ah. Uh, ah uh, yes, a broom. Ah, uh, it is uh, down here. Ah. Uh. You're doing it. You're doing it again. He's not. He's not. T you're not doing it right. Why is he touching himself like that? No. Give me. Give me. I will do the puppet, and you do this. 
Uh, if we could have, um, I don't know, somewhere you would go to get your teeth worked on. Dentist. I heard dentist over there. Thank you. Uh, hello, dentist. How are you? Oh, hello. I am a dentist, and I am carina your teeth. Yes. Now, what is the problem with your gum? Well, my gums, they bleed. See, he's doing it. He just does that's that. That's really weird. Right? I, I, that's, he just controlled me. That was, that was too weird. That's what he does. All right, speaking of things that touch themselves on stage, let's bring up our first comedian tonight. Um, they always say start with your strongest comedian. As this next performer's former roommate, I can confirm he does work out every day. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Adam Rotella. This band's gonna blow these uh, important notes away. All right, so how's everybody doing tonight? Yeah. Awkward silence, always good. Uh, well, my name is Adam Rotella. Some of you guys might remember me from uh, Zach and Shannon's wedding. All right, you know what? I have never been more nervous in my entire life than when I was the minister at their wedding. I actually, I actually remember um, sitting on the back of Zach's motorcycle and uh, Zach turning back to me and he's like, uh, Adam, you look a lot more nervous than I am. And I said, Zach, that's because I've never done this before. <laughs> it's funny because he was married before. All right, always good to start out with a joke that not everyone gets. <laughs> Uh, nice to be in Long Beach tonight. Yeah. Oh, yeah, whatever. Uh, the last time I was in Long Beach, I actually, I actually had sex with my first transsexual. And she was such a beautiful woman, I never saw that coming. Am I right? That's a, that's a triple pun for all you guys out there. So, um, uh, who here watched the uh, opening ceremonies? Hands are clapping, it's fine, for the Olympics this year. Yeah? All right, well, I didn't. But it's a great segue for this joke I wrote eight years ago. <laughs> so how about that China opening ceremonies, huh? Yeah, you know, China's been in the news a lot lately, using a lot of oil. Uh, they own most of America's debt. And then in their opening ceremonies, you know, they got 2,000 drummers drumming in unison, got people popping out of boxes. And then their uh, uh, Olympic uh, gymnastics team wins the gold medal. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow Americans, I think China is poised to take over the circus industry. <laughs> Ringling Brothers, more like Chingling Brothers, am I right? Ah, uh, blatant racism. All is good. All right, so what do you guys think about my outfit tonight, huh? Ladies, gentlemen, transsexuals. I knew there was one, I can always smell them. Um, you know, I was feeling pretty good about how I looked tonight and until I got here and Leo told me that my outfit looked a little gay because my shirt resembles a rainbow. Now folks, a rainbow has solid colors like reds and blues. Uh, this shirt has um, uh, banana, burnt sienna, lavender, and my favorite, kissy boy black. But you know, I do get uh, questioned often if I am gay. And uh, my answer is, well, I'm not that gay. <laughs> and I can actually pinpoint the exact moment when I realized I was a little bit gay. I was uh, watching Project Runway one night, and uh, the picture just started looking a little bit different to me. A little bit fuzzy. That's probably because Pablo's balls kept hitting me in the face. <laughs> it sounded like, just like that. <clears throat> All right, so um, I was reading this article in the New Yorker yesterday, and apparently more people are having sex with dogs than we were led to believe. I think that they actually have a name for themselves. I think they're called uh, uh, dog fuckers. Don't worry about it, it's Latin. And um, you know, I have nothing against dog fucking. My question is, if you've already made the decision to have sex with an animal, why not something a little bit more different? I say, why not sex with a blowfish? I mean, that sounds exactly what I'm looking for, am I right, everybody? <laughs> Turns out I had sex with a blowfish yesterday. I've been calling them all day, hasn't called me back. Just turns out to be an inflated prick. Uh, oh, that's pot number four. 
Somebody chalk them up. All right, so, um, but honestly, I think the no, I best didn't. animal that you could possibly have <laughs> sex with, a fan of that one already, would be a giraffe. And not just because of the tongue, but because you would know that the animal really wanted to do what it wanted to do because a giraffe has to go so far out of its way to give me a blowjob. <laughs> and imagine that blowjob, that's gotta be amazing. Oh, yeah! Your tongue is like twice the length of your head. <laughs> Thank you, evolution. Thank you, Mr. Giraffe. So I have to yell because he's, he's tall. <laughs> Ah, uh, you'll get it later. <laughs> um, but sex is just uh, a weird thing to me. Um, the other day I was having sex with this girl, and she asked if she could put her finger in my butt. Now, you know, I'm all for trying different things, but, uh, you know, I had to make a compromise with her, because that's what relationships, relationships are about. You make compromises. Yeah. So I'm like, you know, can't we just pee on each other like our parents did? <laughs> yeah, back in the golden age? <laughs> once committed a uh, statutory rape, uh, but no, hey, hey, I got away with it. We were both plastered. <laughs> because some statues, they're made of plaster. <laughs> yeah, I'm not that bad of a guy. Um, I have noticed um, a little bit of uh, things changing about myself lately. I'm getting older. I'm going to be 30 years old at the end of this year. Can you believe it? Okay, thank you. Time! Um, uh, my, my, head, my hair's starting to thin a little bit. It's getting a little bit harder for me to achieve an erection. I mean, I remember a day when if a girl's foot accidentally touched my foot, instant erection. <laughs> now, I gotta tie him up with an American flag and hit him with a hairbrush. <laughs> so that's a little bit different. Um, I'm recently single, ladies. <laughs> uh, recently single, and in the argument that led up to my singleness, uh, my girlfriend at the time told me that she dated me because she liked the idea of me. Now, I didn't really know how to take this, so I shot back, well, I don't like the concept of you. It was the most abstract argument I've ever had in my life. By the end of it, we both decided that the universe didn't exist and that she was a whore. <laughs> Compromise. Uh, I've been to jail. Anybody else been to jail? <laughs> the tranny. <laughs> I've been to jail. You know, there, there, there's two things you learn immediately when you go to jail. Number one, it's nothing like Ernest goes to jail. And number two, there's a whole system of rules all based on race. Now, me being a white guy, I wasn't allowed to shower with any of the, uh, the black inmates. Now, you guys might be thinking, hey, that sounds like a pretty good deal. But I went to jail in Irvine. So I'm in the shower with 50 other white guys, and their cocks are hitting me all over the place. It's unavoidable. And then about 20 minutes later, I see the only black inmate taking a shower by himself, and he's whooping it up in there. You know, he's singing, it's raining men! Dropping the soap on purpose, flailing his dick around, yeah! I think I love telling that joke because I got to yell I love segregation at the end of it. Am I right, latent racist fans? But you know, jail, jail is so crazy. I never thought that I would ever, ever go to jail. But you know, you hit one baby in the face with a knife and everybody goes crazy. Okay. All right, that's my time. Thank you everyone very, very much. Thank you, Mayor and Zach, for putting on the show now. And thank you for the free alcohol you've been giving me. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Rotella.